How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. I hope all of you are doing well. With the 2020 NBA season set to resume five weeks away, the best players on the best teams usually win finals MVPs. But throughout the course of NBA history, there will always be a couple of stars who will win the award over the best players on their teams. With that said, here are my finals MVP rankings since 2000. Number 20, Andre Iguodala, 2015. One of the most surprising finals MVP all time, our Shark had the 6-7 small forward, 100 to 1 odds, tied for the 7 bowls. In a series where Kyrie got hurt late game 1, Kevin Love didn't play, Golden State was supposed to roll through Cleveland. But after Steph Curry struggles in games 2 and 3, the Dubs found themselves down 2 games to 1 until Coach Kerr inserted Iggy to the starting lineup. It's shocking to see any finals MVP come off the bench for half of the games. Had a masterful 22.8 rebound game 4, the game he held LeBron to 7 of 22 shooting, a huge difference maker, closed out game 6 with 25 points, having just okay finals numbers, and the primary option on James, who shot just 38% from the floor when Iggy was playing, one of the worst finals MVPs in NBA history. Number 19, Kawhi Leonard, 2014. It was a total team effort for San Antonio. To annihilate Miami, the 22-year-old got the nod, averaged 17.8 points, 6.5 rebounds, over a steal and a block on 61% shooting, 3 other spurs also has strong cases, but since Leonard had the assignment guarding LeBron, who averaged 28-8-4 and on 57% shooting, James scored 63% of his points from games 3-5 to five, being down 15+. plus. Leonard's length and versatility caused problems, made efficient shots thanks to his team's fluid ball movement. After game 2, Miami didn't have a chance. Number 18, Chauncey Billups 2004. Mr. Big Shot wasn't even named an all-star, only Ben Wallace for the Pistons. One of the biggest finals upsets all time, it was more about the Lakers collapsing. Detroit's defense was second to none, had perfect chemistry, despite no superstar, Billups destroyed 35-year-old Gary Payton, averaged 21 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 51% shooting, 47 from 3, 93 from the line, set the tone from the series opener, controlled the tempo, played well every game, whether it was at home or on the road. Not only did Mr. Big Shot change his reputation, but was also considered one of the best point guards of his generation. All the negative talk of him being a bust were this miss. Number 17, Paul Pierce 2008. Just like Detroit in 2004 and San Antonio in 2014, it was a total team effort for Boston. Pierce averaged almost 22 points, 4.5 rebounds, over 6 assists, 43% shooting. Even though Allen and Garnett deserve some considerations, Pierce scared every Celtic fan. After being carried off the court, put in a wheelchair the third quarter of game 1, but was just fine, went on to drain back-to-back threes, changing the momentum of the game, dropped 28 in game 2, the leading score in the fourth game, the vocal of the Celtics offense and the facilitator for much of that series, Boston was simply the best team the whole season. Number 16, Tony Parker 2007. The 25 year old set the tone from the get go, dropped an easy 27.7 assist game 1, even better in game 2 with a 30 point masterpiece, averaged 24 and a half points, 5 rebounds, shot 57% for the series, an easy 4 game sweep against a way weaker Cavs team, I didn't rank this performance any higher since it was such an easy match matchup for San Antonio. A brilliant display, got to the basket whenever he wanted. Despite being the lowest rated final series, the Spurs simply took care of business. Number 15, Kawhi Leonard 2019. Not very high on my list, since he had a lot of help against a wounded Warriors team, seeing Durant only play 12 minutes of Game 5 and the hobble Clay Thompson, although Leonard had good numbers of almost 30 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals over a block, teammate Pascal Siakam and Kyle Lowry each had 26 in Game 6. In the first game, it was Siakam who was the better player, scoring 32 points, his teammates rose to the occasion. While Kawhi was dealing with minor injuries of his own those finals, it wasn't close to his best series of those playoffs. If the Warriors had Durant, the outcome would be totally different. Nevertheless, Kawhi did what he needed to do. Number 14, Kevin Durant 2018. Although his numbers were amazing and efficient because the difference of the two teams were so one-sided, it was extremely obvious Golden State was going to roll through Cleveland. His 29.11 rebounds, 7.5 assists, over 2 steals on 53% shooting, way more efficient than a lot of the players on this list ahead of him, but because this finals was an absolute cakewalk, Golden State simply took care of business and pledging Durant on the team with three other all-stars, of course he would be extremely efficient and things would be easy. 
The Cavs didn't have good defense anyway. While the real final should have been Golden State Houston, nothing was out of the ordinary for Durant and the Warriors. LeBron James also put up monster numbers, but the team matchup just wasn't fair. Number 13, Tim Duncan 2005, which wasn't close to his best finals, but simply got the job done on both ends, showed up in game 7 when it mattered most 25 points, 11 rebounds, despite shooting just 10 of 27, an extremely defensive low scoring series, the big fundamental average 20.6 points, 14 rebounds, over two blocks, 42% shooting. Both San Antonio and Detroit averaged under 87 points for the series. In reality, no superstar would be efficient against the two Wallaces. Teammate Manu Ginobili was way more efficient because Duncan was the primary option and the focus of the Pistons defense. Despite having a solid game 5 of 26 points, 19 rebounds, Duncan missed 6 straight free throws in the 4th and missed a wide open putback in regulation saved by Robert Ory. Timmy D certainly made a lot of Spurs fans nervous that series. Didn't have a game that stood out heavily. Unlike his earlier finals, 05 was a total team effort with high defensive intensity you won't see in today's NBA. Number 12, Kobe Bryant 2010. The Mamba did everything he had to do, winning his fifth title, a revenge season, silencing his critics even though he wasn't efficient, had a 6 of 24 game 7. In reality, nobody shot well that final game. Bryant grabbed 15 big rebounds against Boston's big three, extremely tough competition, averaged over 28 and a half points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, over for two steals. Some believe Gasol should have won finals MVP, but absolutely not since Kobe also played well on the road, set the tone in game 1, helped the Lakers win game 3 with 29 points, Gasol only 13, LA's only win in Boston. Kobe also had a masterful 38 point game 5, his teammates didn't show up, Gasol only a dozen, LA averaged only 90.6 points for the series, a physical battle. This title highly enhanced Kobe's legacy, especially with the Lakers Celtics rivalry implications throughout league history. Kobe was the engine to that team and wasn't going to let down, did whatever it took to win, and that's what mattered most. Number 11, LeBron James 2012. His first title, there was no stopping him, going up against the Young Thunder, all eyes were on LBJ, had good numbers of 28.6 points, over 10 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 1.6 steals on 47% shooting, confidently took over with 32 in the second game, down the stretch, overcoming all his critics, displayed his all around game, punished the Thunder's interior defense, willed the heat to victory in game 4, knocked down the crucial 3 pointer, while playing through cramps, took care of this business in the 5th game, putting up a 26 point triple double. Although the matchup between him and KD were close, James had more help from his teammates. Number 10 LeBron James 2013 I ranked this slightly above 2012. Since San Antonio was a better team, James battled and overcame tremendous adversity. The finals numbers weren't his best by any means, 25.3 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 2.3 steals, just 45% shooting, didn't shoot well in 4 of those games, but let Miami's comeback in game 6 down 10 heading into the 4th. The he wouldn't have been in position to win the game if it wasn't for James Dominus down the stretch. Even though he had some bad moments and crucial turnovers the end of game 6, his teammates rose to the occasion, helped keep the series alive, leading him for a brilliant game 7, confidently rely on his jumper, hit 5 threes, made the Spurs defense pay when they left him open, a 37 point effort, nothing short of sensational, made up from his early struggles in the series. San Antonio was a more complete team, but thanks to Danny Green's 1 of 12 shooting wounds in the 7th game, Miami Miami back to back champions. Number 9, Dirt Nowitzki 2011 who had one of the most incredible playoff runs of anybody in history. Many counted Dallas out from the start, from knocking off Kobe's Lakers to Durant's Thunder. The 7-footer didn't have his best series in the finals, shooting-wise, 26 points, 10 rebounds, under 42% from the field. Dwayne Wade had the more efficient numbers, but with Dallas's backs against the wall, down 15 in Game 2, it seemed like there was no hope for Dallas, and Miami was on his way cruising through the finals, but Dirk let the improbable comeback, hit the go-ahead winning layup in the second game, transformed himself into the ultimate team player and clutch performer, battled with a flu, even mocked by James and Wade, got to the basket late game 4, gave his team a cushion, followed by 29 big points in game 5, closing the series in 6, not to forget about Jason Terry's clutch performance who delivered off the bench. Number 8, Kobe Bryant 2009. His first title without Shaq, silencing all the haters, 09 Kobe was on a mission from the start of the season. Let the magic know from the start, there was no stopping the Mamba, averaged 32 and a half points, 5 and a half rebounds, 7 and a half assists, dropped 48 and 8 in game 1, showing an array of moves from the end ones to the fadeaways. After a disappointing 08 finals, Bryant installed toughness to his teammates, especially Pau Gasol, who outplayed Dwight Howard, trusted everybody, especially veterans 
veteran Derek Fisher in Game 4 knocked out multiple big time shots. The Mamba mentality was simply on full display in 2009. Kobe scored between 29 to 40 points each of those 5 games. Number 7, Kevin Durant 2017. Statistically, it was one of the best finals we ever seen, but Golden State was close to unstoppable and unbeatable. 4 All-Stars in search for his first title, Durant did what he needed to do. Cleveland's defense wasn't elite. Average over 35 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists on 56% shooting. Golden State just outran the Cavs the whole time. Cleveland was eventually going to tire out in the second half. James himself averaged a 33-point triple-double with no defense played whatsoever. The Warriors averaged 121 points for the series. Cleveland 115. Anything short of a title for Golden State would be considered an epic failure since the team won 73 games the year before without him. Up 3-1. The Dubs might have repeated if it wasn't for the injuries and suspension just by adding the best score in the game make Golden State untouchable especially when healthy. Number 6 Tim Duncan 2003. The lone all-star on his team, the way he carried those Spurs to the finals, a true testament to his greatness, averaged over 24 points, 17 rebounds, over 5 assists, a steal, 5.5 block shots, nearly 50% shooting. His defense was even better than his offense, that's the scary part. Having second year Tony Parker and David Robinson's final season, Duncan started with a 32.20 rebound, 7 block game 1 performance. New Jersey simply had no answers for the big fundamental. After the Nets tied the series at 2, Duncan had enough, a 29.17 4 block game 5 in 46 minutes, down big in the 4th of game 6, Tim had a near quadruple double closeout, 21, 20, 10 and 8 blocks, many argue 2 of his blocks were resented and should have counted, absolutely locked up Kenyon Martin, held him to 3 of 23 shooting the final game, there was never a doubt who the most valuable player in 2003 was, Prime Duncan was as good as any power forward we ever seen. Number 5 Shaquille O'Neal 2002, the most dominating force in the 21st century, the 30 year old absolutely destroyed, abused, annihilated, humiliated, demolished, and ragdolled everybody and anybody who dared guard him. Averaged 36.3 points, over 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks on 60% shooting since it was against the weaker Nets and wasn't much of a series combined with Kobe's brilliance. The only reason why his 0-2 performance wasn't higher on this list, the Nets picks weren't great anyway against Tom McCullough, Jason Collins, and Aaron Williams. Collins had more fouls than points for the series. Series. Shaq scored between 34 to 40 points each of the four games, completing a three-peat in dominating fashion. Number four, LeBron James 2016, the greatest comeback in finals history, led all players in each of the five major statistical categories. LBJ refused to let his team lose. The reason why this isn't number one on the list, James did have a couple bad games. A reason why his team fell down 3-1 in the first place, with the help of Draymond's suspension and Andrew Bogut going down in the fifth game. James's game five and six performance absolutely legendary, 41 apiece in back-to-back -back elimination games changed the momentum of the series, Golden State couldn't handle the pressure, heavily outplayed the two-time MVP Steph Curry, proving no doubt who was the best player in the game. Despite not having his best numbers in Game 7, 27, 11, and 11 did what he needed to do the chase down block on Iguodala. The most spectacular defensive play in NBA history, superstar teammate Kyrie Irving also put in work, averaged 27 for the series, and now played Steph Curry. LeBron finally being able to win a title for Cleveland, the biggest accomplishment of his career. Number 3, Dwayne Wade, 2006. Flash had his best series, single-handedly put Miami on his shoulder, averaged almost 35 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, almost 3 steals, a block, his team's second leading scorer, Antoine Walker, under 14 a game, Miami being down 2-0, looked doomed after trailing by 13 with just over 5 minutes left in the third game, many written the heat off at the time, but the 24 year old absolutely took over down the stretch, refused to go down, got to the basket whenever he wanted, constantly hit mid-range jumpers, scored a dozen in the final 3 minutes of game 3, 42 points, 13 rebounds, followed that up with 36, 43, and 36. The next 3 games, all heat victories, went to the line as often as the entire Mavs team 73 times the final 4 games because 2016 LeBron had Kyrie who also had monster performances in the comeback vs Golden State. 06 Shaq was no longer superstar Shaq and was just a role player for much of that finals. Despite Jerry Stackhouse being suspended for game 5, he was an average role player at that point for Dallas. While Draymond Green was a critical star player in 2016, Dallas didn't have any injuries. While Bogut went down for Golden State, leading to the disastrous Festus Azili in game 7, D-Wade single-handedly carried the heat, hit all the clutch jumpers imaginable. 
which was why I felt his performance was a little better than James in 2016. Number 2 Shaquille O'Neal 2001 The most dominating force in the most dominating playoff run, Shaq and Kobe played their best basketball together in the 0-1 postseason, both took turns dominating, O'Neal took care of Portland in round 1, Kobe destroyed Sacramento and San Antonio, in the finals it was the Big Diesel's turn, average 33 points, 16 rebounds, 5 assists, 3.5 blocks, 57% shooting, dominated and posterized 7-1 to Kemby Batumbo, made him look like a baby out there, who was the best interior brim protector at the time, the defensive player of the year, didn't matter. After a 44 and 20 game 1 loss, the only L the Lakers took that whole playoffs. Shaq flirted with a near quadruple double game 2, 28 points, 20 rebounds, 9 dimes, 8 blocks, was also the best defender that series. The way he backed down to Kembe, Shaq was a giant amongst boys. Number 1, who else but Shaquille O'Neal, 2000 finals, one of the best individual finals performances all time, and the best finals performer in his prime outside of Michael Jordan, the MVP was on a mission all season, being tired of the criticism over his lack of championships, his 300 plus pound frame, 8 7 foot 4 Rick Smith and big man Dale Davis alive for breakfast, lunch and dinner, averaged 38 points, 17 rebounds, nearly 3 blocks on 61% shooting, O'Neal was so physically dominant, he won 36 of 19 93 from the line, 39%, but it didn't matter. If Shaq was a 90% foul shooter, he would have averaged close to 50 points for the series. Had 43 and 19 in the first game. After Jalen Rose's cheap shot on Kobe in game 2, O'Neal gave the Pacers no hope. A 40 point 24 rebound masterpiece. Scored between 33 to 43 each of the 6 games. Didn't have an off night. The perfect definition of unstoppable. The Big Diesel had 41 points, 12 rebounds, 4 blocks in the closeout game 6. Ran the floor like a guard, by far the best final series for a center, Shaq simply owned and controlled the pain at all times, too good, too strong, too powerful, prime Shaq was unlike anybody we have ever seen. Which one of these finals performances was your favorite all time? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe for more content, I love all of you, see you next time.